Well, dear friends, uh, once again today we're talking about uh, talents. And of course in the scripture for today it seemed to simply be referring to money, that we would go out and try to manage our money to the best of our abilities, but certainly the principles apply to all of our life, don't they? I mean, the Lord has given each of us certain talents. And the scripture seems to indicate that he expects that we would then use those talents to the best of our abilities. Now, perhaps sometimes in the, the Lutheran church, maybe especially, we might become confused about how that is supposed to play out because, you know, we certainly want people always to know that God is <coughs> the one who begins the process. See? And, and really, it is similar to that occupation of mining. That, that is, the folks that go down deep into the ground to try to recover uh, precious materials. Uh, maybe simply coal uh, to be able to heat people's homes. Or, or to gather gold or, or silver or, or precious jewels uh, to be able to, to make a fortune. But whatever the, the case might be, you know that the miner must dig a shaft, right? That they must go deep into the ground. That they must experience a discomfort, right? You know, it, 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 it's dark. I have to bring my light along. I, I'm claustrophobic. I don't like closed spaces. It, it, it's uncomfortable for me. But yet, mm -hmm. right? I search for the precious material. I, I, I have to work for it. Now, after the fall, you know, one of the consequences was, by the sweat of your brow, you will earn your bread. And so the, the Lord, he says, though, that he has put those precious things there for us to find. Right, we, we, we can still find them, but there is a place for us <laughs> to work, we see. And yeah, sometimes in the Christian church, when we're emphasizing, you know, uh, of course, as we want to do, that it is God who begins the process, and it is God who brings it to uh, fruition, we maybe sometimes forget that we have a part. It's easy to just kind of sit back and say, well, if God really wanted that to happen, I guess it would have happened. And since it didn't happen, uh, maybe it's not God's will. And you say, well, did, did you bother to get up this morning? Yeah. Did you just decide to sleep in? Did, did you bother to go to the job interview? Or did you just somehow think that the interviewer would magically call you at home and offer you the, the job that you always dreamed? Right. Did you put in your part, we see? But yet, on the other hand, we kind of understand, don't we? If God hasn't prepared you know, the, the mine, if God hasn't put any precious materials in that place where you're trying to find them, you're not going to to be successful, no matter how hard you work at it, right? Because God has to place the things in our path, doesn't he? And God has to put those resources in that particular place where we are traveling, doesn't he? If they're not there, it doesn't matter how hard I work in that dry hole, it's still going to be dry. No matter how much I dig for that new well, if there's no water under that spot, I'm not going to make it, am I? It's not going to be there. And so we come to see that, you know, there, there are the two parts. 
There is a, our mighty, loving God. He says that he knows the things that we need even before we ask. He says that, that he has placed in our path for each particular day, you know, special treasures and, and special gifts. Right, but, but yet he does expect that we would, you know, get up out of bed in the morning, right? That, that we would go about our, our daily activities. Yeah? That we would be looking for those precious gems. That, that we would be doing our best. And that is really what the parable of the talents is talking about for us uh, this morning, right? There, there's the one fella, you know, uh, supremely gifted. Well, he, he has five talents. Now, uh, again, the parable, right, that, that's money, but you can uh, imagine, you know, maybe you grew up with one of your friends and, and they seemed to have everything going for them. You know, and you would say, well, they, they had five talents. You know, they were athletically gifted and they're mentally superior and they, you know, were, were morally good people. And, you know, you, you could count to five, the, the five qualities that they really stood out, right? And th those are the, the kinds of people, you know, they get the scholarships and they get the, the athletic uh, you know, scholarships and the mental, you know, scholarships and all of that stuff seems to come their way. And, and you say, wow, that person can really go far. And, well, maybe you've known some, some people like that, that they, they went off to, to college and, and, and they just failed. The, the, the coach cut them from the, the team and their athletic scholarship disappeared. And instead of going to class, they went to the parties and they were, you know, drunk at night, as the, the text talked about today. And, you know, things just kind of went out of control and, and, and no one even knows who that person is anymore. And, and, and what happened? Right, that they stopped doing their part, didn't they? They stop looking for the treasure. Right? They, they stop working hard to achieve <laughs> God's will in their life. They stop getting up in the morning and going to class. You know? And they would wonder why things kind of fell apart. And that's exactly where God does not want us to be. And so he, he praises that servant who used his talent, who used his ability and actually went out and made you know his mark as they used to say right you know i mean the lord you know gave me five talents he says and i have made five talents more not i did my best i, I used the things i was given to create something more and the Lord says to, to that particular individual, well, you know, well done, good and faithful servant, right? And then he gives the other example. You know, here's a, another fellow. He didn't quite have the five talents, but he had two, right? And there, there are two areas where, you know, he, he was doing pretty well. And I've, again, you know, you and I, we've known people that, you know, they, they had one or two things going for them and, and they left high school and they went off to college and it, it just seemed like maybe nothing really happened. You know, you, you lost track of them. They don't even come to the, the class reunion anymore. You say, well, you know, what, whatever happened to, you know, Biff Rifkin? I, I don't know. I don't know what happened to Biff. Right? He, 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 he's just gone. So, well, well, he was so good in sports when he was in school, right? And then he used to come to church every Sunday. It seemed like he had a couple things going for him. Like, what happened? And, and, and we just don't know. But again, in our parable for today, right, the one person, he, he has two talents, right? And, and he strives to do his best, doesn't he? Right? He, he actually gets up and goes to class. When, when he goes off to college, you know. And it, instead of getting drunk on Saturday night with his, his uh, friends, he said, hey, I want to be in church on Sunday morning. And so I can't be doing that. 
But I want to be able to get up and I, I want to be able to worship the Lord. And, and so he made that a priority in his life. See? And he's able to make two talents more. Again, the master says you know, to him, well done, good and faithful servant. See, you did your best, right? You, you didn't quite have the, the five talents, but it, instead of saying, you know, oh man, I'm not like that person. I guess I should just kind of give up, right? I, I've never been a, a superstar, and so maybe I'm just not <laughs> going to achieve anything worthwhile. And, and I, I guess I'll sit here in front of my, you know, TV, you know, watch my shows, and let life kind of pass by. No, well, that that person, you know, said, "Well, I have two talents, right? I'm, I'm going to do my best. I, I'm going to make two talents more." And, and and so they did. Well done, good and faithful servant. See, who, who is the one that gets the rebuke? It, it's that, that, oh man, I, I only have one. You know? I, I'm really only good at, at one thing. And I know that the Lord is kind of hard. Well, well first of all, he's kind of misrepresenting the Lord, isn't he? I mean, he's starting off from a, a, a bad spot, right? Because the, the Lord is good. All through the scriptures we see that the Lord has great love for us. That the Lord looks at our relationship as a, a father and a child. And that the Lord says he has good plans for us. And the Lord says he's going to prepare the field so that your crops can grow. And he says he's going to prepare the, the mine so that you can mine out those precious things that you need. He says he's going to give you the, what you need to make it through today. Right All through the scripture we have that image of a loving and caring God. And so when the servant comes out and says, well, I knew you were a hard man. And you expect things to happen where you haven't even made plans for them to happen. And you expect me to really come and do my best when you know that I'm just kind of lazy to start. Right? You have too high expectations for me. That's kind of what he's saying, isn't it? Right? And, and so, you know, I, I took that talent, that treasure, that thing you gave me, and I just kind of buried it in the ground. You know, because I, I knew that if somehow I, I lost it, it would probably be all over. But again, right, the, the Lord says, no, he forgives our sin, right? That, that's kind of the, the beautiful part of our liturgical service is that we start out with <laughs> that really important part, don't we? Right, I, a poor, miserable sinner, right, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. Well, we, we have big words too, right? It, it, it means, you know, I haven't quite made it this week, right? I haven't quite lived up to your expectations, but Lord, I know that you still love me, and can I have another chance? And, and, and the Lord who loves us so much, he wraps his arms around us, right? He, he, he sends a, a, a pastors who then, after the confession, pronounce that forgiveness. And, and it's such a privilege for me to be able to, to tell you, not, not just, hey, you know, I, I Joseph Edward Crosswhite the third, forgive you, God. Go have a good week. 
But no, in the stead and by the command of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. Right? God himself right, gives those words. We are forgiven. And so there, there's never really an excuse for us to say, well, I, I serve a really hard God. No, he, he's really not very understanding. Right? He, he's really kind of a mean guy. You know? And so I, I better just kind of hide my talent in the ground because if, if something ever happened, then I, I, I lost it. I, I don't know what he would do. Right? You know, but really bad things might start happening to me. And so to play it safe, right, I'm just going to kind of retire to my couch and the living room and, and I'm just going to kind of, you know, try to, to be at peace and I'm never really going to attempt to accomplish anything that, that I, I might want to do. I'm never going to have any dreams. I'm not going to have any goals because God might just stomp on me. Well, sometimes people have that, that image in their head, don't they? And behold, there is my servant failing again. Stop. Right? Really, that, that's how the, the third person feels, isn't it? Right? I better hide my talent in the ground. Right? God, God is kind of mean. I, I'm going to get stomped on. I, I, I don't know what to do. But we see in the text for today, right, the example of you know, what happens with a, a person that has that attitude, right? Even the one thing I've given to you, I'm going to take back now. I'm going to give it to that person who has the ten talents instead. Right, because they demonstrated, yes, first of all, their trust in me. Right, God gave me five talents. I think I can go and make five more. Right? Yeah, God says he loves me so very much. He says he's put good things out there for me to achieve. I think that if I work hard, I can be successful because God says he's my dad. And God says he loves me. And God says he forgives me when I mess it up. God says I, I, I can take some chances with those talents. And if I really <laughs> blow it, if I really fail, he can make it good still. God is for me. Okay? But when I have that kind of attitude, right, it gives me uh, that ability to go out and attempt you know, some of the things that I might be afraid of. To be able to use some of those talents uh, that God has given. It's really a, a, a lot of fun for me as a, a pastor to uh, be able to serve in, in smaller the congregations because you know then I'm able to really see people you know coming out of their shells coming to, together working uh, hard because that's kind of what it takes to, to make a, a smaller church like ours you know work doesn't it now you can kind of get in, in larger congregations everybody thinks oh you know all those other people are so much better than I am and I, I don't know if I want to volunteer for anything and I don't know if I, I really want to you know do any of that kind of work because I, you know people might make fun of me or maybe I'm just not as good as some others I'll, I'll just kind of sit back and leave it you know to the, the big wheel And, and, and when we get to a, a, a place where, you know, we're, we're a, a size like this, we, we kind of all realize, I, I need to do my part. I, I, I need to be able to pitch in. You know, I, I need to be able to use some of, of my talents, even though maybe they're not as spectacular as the, the talents those guys have over in the big city. 
you know. I still want my church to work. I want it to grow. And I know that I have to do my part. And, and so, you know, we, we have that going on, don't we? Right, we, we have Micah who comes and, and, and does, you know, our, 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 our sound and our video every Sunday, right? He, he's here to be able to run the camera and edit the, the tape and, you know, post it where it needs to go. Right, we, we, we have Bob and, and Mary who come out. You know, Mary shares her, her voice uh, doing some of the, the readings for us. Bob is, is getting things organized uh, behind the scenes, right? We, we have uh, Todd who is our, our, our president and he's here on, on Sundays. He, he, you know, he drives in from the big city, right? Because you know, he wants to be here where people are giving their best and they're doing their best. Right? You know, we, we have people who come and mow the lawn during the summer. But you, you don't know who that is with that fellow back there. You know, he has a lot to do with mowing the lawn in the summer, right? Wait. Right. And so it goes, doesn't it? Right? We come together, we use our talents, we share them with one another, and our church continues forward. But you know what? If I have a talent and I just kind of hide it in the ground, <laughs> no, uh, God has given me some certain gift, but I never want to share it with anybody. And, and then I, I say, well, if I try to probably just fail, and, you know, God is really kind of harsh, and he tried to just be mad at me that I didn't do that good of a job, and, and I, I, I don't know, and, and it's safer for me to just kind of watch TV in my living room than to actually go out there and try to, to do something that I, I always wanted to do, or try something I, I always wanted to try, right? Then it shuts us down, right? It, it closes off God's ability to work in our lives, and it also provides a false testimony about what God is like, doesn't it? God is never going to do anything good for me. No, God's probably not going to help me. If I would go and try to find a better job, it would probably not really work out, so why bother? I, I don't know that God's really given me any special talents at, at all. Yeah. Hopefully you've never had feelings like that, but, but sometimes all of us do, don't we? Now what if I try and it doesn't work? What if I try and I just fail? 